Hello and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 on Bally Spring. So, I'm actually really enjoying this series at the moment. I hope everyone else is. If you are, please make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel if you're new. Right, so in the last episode we did a lot of hay. Pretty much all the grass fields over there we chopped down and did our second cut of hay. I've stored all them away now, so that's that done. I stored the bales away all, all the bales, so I know I had some straw ones to do and the hay, but we've done that. That's a job ticked off the list. But I also decided to tend to this field. So this was the field we obviously combined together. I think it was like three fields, maybe four. It was probably three looking at it on the map. Um, pretty sure it was three now. Yes, it's three fields that we've combined together. We did canola in it. We harvested that. Um, but then what I decided to do was obviously in preparation for when we direct seed in the next crop we're going to grow in here. Um, I've mulched it and I've actually put some manure down. Now, th this texture for manure I actually really like. So this is the texture of a mulched field with a bit of manure on. So looks pretty good. So that's ready for obviously the next task, which will be just direct seeding in. So that's one field sorted out. I have also, which you can probably tell, put a new barn in. So I obviously took out a loan originally, put a barn down, and then we were going to put our beef cattle or beef stock in here. So, are you kidding me? What is, <laughs> that is, it's got to be something to do with the animals then. Is that the second... That is the second animal. Yeah, that is the second barn I've put down. Hmm. I am bewildered to know why they're walking down the middle. I, I guess they're too, too small. The calves are just getting through. I don't even know. That's the second one. So we're just going to have to leave it like that now, unfortunately. But I do like this barn. I think it's a perfect barn for, yeah, beef stock. Now, I'm hoping when they're not calves, maybe... That'll sort it out, but it's a strange one. It really is a strange one. How the yeah, moving in the middle, like that, when they shouldn't be. So it was a little bigger, and as you can tell, I have actually placed it in quite well. So I'm happy with how it's turned out. I did have to do a bit of terraforming here, just to level it off, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Right, so, now that that's out of the way, we can focus on... The main part of this episode, which is we're going to be doing the the May salage. So obviously that's quite a big job. We've got two fields this time, and we're going to be leasing out quite a lot of equipment. But I have set up the auto drive route first, so I'm going to show you that just so you can see what I've done, just in case you want to try it out yourself. I am confident, and that might be just shooting myself in the foot, that it'll work. We're going to be doing two carters, so I need to lease out another trailer. And we also need to lease out the forage harvester. Uh, but I'm hoping, yeah, it's working. That is bumpy. <laughs> Especially in this little thing. I also had a, Mark for had a look at the baler for me. So thank you to Mark for that. He looks like it was a little bit offset, the pickup. So I'm hoping that'll be enough. If not, we can always widen it after within G. So hopefully that'll be all right. So I think first thing you can see, I put the bales in there. And this bunker is now going to have two fields in. So I'm hoping by the end of this episode... We'll take a comparison of what we're looking at now. And yeah, it'll be pretty decent because we definitely need it. We used a hell of a lot of May silage. In fact, that's all we've got left. <laughs> so let's go on to the third person view. And what I'll do is I'll bring up what you can... I'll bring up the uh, edited version of Water Drive so we can see what I've done. So I've just put one tip point. Now, I could have put three just so I could separate it out, but I think what I'll do is when I level it, I'll, I'll move it around. I think that's best the best way to do it. Just keep it simple, get it in the bunker, um, and then, yeah, we'll, we can sort it out when we're obviously compacting it, placing it and leveling it out then. So I've done a big reverse. It kind of drives in, and then it's going to reverse all the way around to this point and then tip in. Pretty straightforward. I've tested it out. It does work. And then it obviously travels down all the way to the field. Ooh, bloody hell. That was poor driving. Yeah, so it, it travels down all the way to the field, but also I've got a, my own point where it can either turn left or right, and then obviously go up to that field, 
or to this one down at the bottom. So we've got two maze fields that we're going to be doing in this episode. So, yeah, I'm hoping that either 109 and 11... We've got 109 and 110. So I have tried to get this as best I could with it being just two-way. So it's a two-way route. It can obviously travel either side, coming back to the farm or going back down to the field. So because of that, the turns have to be, yeah... Kind of like tailored to each side. So ideally what I would have done is done it as single routes either side. Um, I'm hoping. With the trailer we've got now, it works. I'm just thinking if we do lease one out and it's a bigger trailer, then obviously that's where the problems might lie. Now, my original plan was to do the forage harvesting and then have the carters working. But I would prefer to do carting in one of the trailers and let the forage harvester run through course play. Now that worked perfectly on court farms. It really did. I tried it out when I was doing the episode uh, for contractors in the farmhand and I had no issue at all. Obviously the hedges on there are, we haven't got collisions. It, they're obviously much bigger field that we worked in. So we could have a problem, but we'll try it out. We'll try it out. And if the worst case scenario happens, then it's obviously gonna be down to us to yeah, pretty much do the uh, the forage harvesting and we can have uh, auto drive during the carting now it's going to be difficult with the two i'm hoping i time it well or the timing is well enough the gap basically where they won't meet each other we basically want one of these drivers to come back from the bun bunker and wait at the wait point in that field before the other one carts off to tip into the bunker that will be ideal but obviously some things you know will be tricky so these are the two tracks we're going to use but first we could have to go down to the store and lease out what we need. It's going to be obviously a forage harvester in the attachment, so the head on the front, and then we just need another trailer. That's pretty much it. And we definitely don't need to bring the weight back, which is always a bonus. Still got the traffic off on the map just because. Yeah, if we're using auto drive and anything like that, it's always better to not have traffic on. Now, I have obviously removed the auto drive guy's network that he created just because I wanted to obviously make this custom one. So we are running without it currently. Hey up now, hey up. Very busy walkway. Right, so here we go. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get anything too expensive, but I think the problem I was having the last time I tried to do this with grass, I think it was. Oh, it was the maze. It was the maze. Yeah, the last time I tried to do this on this save game, I was having issues with the actual trailer. So I'm hoping that we don't have to switch out the trailer we've got now. That's why it'd be better if, if I could drive it because it wasn't, it wasn't, it was, it was a pain. It really was a pain. And I had to do the carting myself, I think. Right, so, yep, we're going to need a trailer, a decent one, hopefully, and then, yeah, forage harvester. Right, so part of me's thinking that a base game would be best. I know this is made by Giant Software. It is an addition, but it's still Giant Software. We could go for that. I think that's fine. It's going to be expensive. Um... Keep it standard. I mean, GPS might be a good idea. Just because if we're going to drive it, it'll keep us straight. But then again, it's not necessary. I mean, we've got to think of cost as well. Because that's 18,000. <laughs> that is steep. That really is. Steep. I mean, this one will do the job. It really will. Oh man, taking a risk though, aren't I? I'm taking a risk. We want salad additive. I'm going to go with this just because that cost was insane. It really was. But yeah, I'm going to go for it just because, yeah, it, it makes sense. We're going to save a lot of money. 3,182. It's a no-brainer. And we can get ourselves a corn header. Six, well, it's 5.3 meters. Not the biggest. Not the biggest in the world, but we'll still be able to do the job. It might actually work out better. Might mean that course play can 
use this. Hmm. Is that the one we just got, though? Yeah, the 695, so it does have its own pickup, which is great. So, yeah, we'll go with this. And we also want to buy some silage additive, because I'm not 100% certain we got some. We probably have, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And then, finally, we're going to need some... Well, we're going to need some green... We're going to need a, a good trailer for forage harvester. So, silage trailer. Now, I have currently got one of these already. I think it's that one, the dolly. Anything by 4D Modern is pretty spot on. So we could go for a 4D Modern one. I mean, that's a nice trailer. Pretty hefty, though. Right, so I've decided I'm going to go with this trailer. Now, there's good reason for that. It doesn't hold too much. And it's small, so it's perfect for getting by. We should be able to still travel around the corners that I've already set through water drive. But not only that, if I set this going first, with the other one being much larger, it gives it more time or more chance for it to get back to its weight point by the time the other one fills up. So we should set this one going first, definitely. Uh, but there we are. We're all set up. Got some good kit. We have saved a lot of money by not going crazy on price. Definitely didn't want to spend too much. I think we've done well there. So I'll get everything set up back at the field. And yeah, we'll see how this goes. Fingers crossed it works a treat because we can't do it on our own. That's a fact. Not unless we haul the trailer behind, which, you know, we can po probably do. I, I imagine this has got a hitch at the back, which it has. But I think it's probably better to try and use auto drive and course play. Ideally... For the video's sake, it'd make much better footage if I could get both of them working together. But, uh, yeah, that's always a, a difficult task. <laughs> it's a very slow forage off. It's a nice slow stroll <laughs> to, the, uh, to the fields. But I just noticed that that corn there was ready to harvest, so we're very close... Honestly, next in-game day and ours would have gone to that point and we don't want to be doing our maize pretty much at that, well, maize silage anyway at that time. But that it will be perfect for when we do the CCM. So that's why I've kept the harvester, the main harvester that we got, that Massey, that we leased out because we're just going to need a new header to obviously chop up that corn and bring it into the silo. So then we can start, well, milling it basically. And as soon as it's raw CCM, we can then put it into a bunker which we still need to actually place down and then we can obviously ferment it so it's be the same as uh, grass silage or maize silage at that point putting it into a bunker but we're coming up to a field so I think I'll start with this one first and we'll move over from 110 to 109 right, I'm going to try a course play I'm going to start it off with course play and the trailer behind us I think it's better for me to drive the other trailer which I do know I had a few problems with so Hopefully that'll be, hopefully it'll work and then we won't have any issues. But there's only one way to find out. There really is. So, let's jump back to this one. I'll leave this just sitting for you. I think the white point is just there behind this field, behind this hedge. This is going to be interesting. But if I leave it there, it might just work. I do like this mod though, this forage obviously, it's pretty decent. Let's unfold the pipe. And I'll just set it going from about here. It's going to be a big task in it with the size header that I've picked, but of course play can help us out on that one. So let's sort this out. Definitely not 4.4, surely it wasn't that small. Surely. Oh, it says 5.3, so... We'll set that to that, just because that's even smaller and more work. There we go. So we're going to do probably more headlands just to make our life easier. I'd rather do a load of headlands with it being 5 metres. 
That's like doing three at 10 meters. I think that's probably about right. Um, we won't worry about the overlap too much, maybe 10%. And we'll keep the field boundary the same. And I think that should be all right. I mean, that's a lot of headlands, but I'd prefer it that way. It hopefully means that, yeah. Uh, hopefully means that it's going to work. <laughs> so field one, field 10, wait. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, next step. Get this tractor sitting at the weight point. Now, we might do a bit of crop damage. We might do. Especially with this part. So, set this to unload combine. That's the one we want. So we want to go field 10 weight and we're going to be bunker tip and off we go. Don't know where it's driving to. It's chasing the combine. So this is the problem I had. You think by now that that'd be throwing in. Now, I don't know if it's the trailer or the harvester. I'm not sure. But it's uh, yeah, it's a pain really because from that distance it should be working. So if it is the forage officer and I've made the exact same mistake again like last time, then I am an absolute moppet be honest so let's stop this there's something that's not right and if it's the trailers I'm picking or the forage harvester but I believe it's probably the forage harvester yeah doesn't look good does it because it should be from there perfectly fine ideally anyway because look he's, he's there he's happy it shouldn't be an issue at all that's definitely close enough I think we're going to have to take a hit. I think we're going to have to replace the forage harvest and go with something base game, which is going to cost us a fortune, but it'll be worth it for having the silage. Not ideal, though, because look how close that is. In game, normally, that would be fine. Normally. So, yeah, we're going to... We'll, we'll switch out the forage harvester. Probably put our money back in that we've spent on that one, which is only 3,000. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. Not ideal though, but at least the field will get done quicker. Right, so welcome back. We've changed out the forage harvester, got a much bigger header, taking a hit on how much that's going to cost us. We did go down to about 45, but I have sold our uh, salad trailer because it was problematic. As I was trying to use it myself, so driving, and it really just there's a problem with it where it just it's like the the area where it should be tipping into the or throwing out from the pipe of the forage officer, it just keeps missing. So I've gone for this, and I've leased this out, but I absolutely love this trailer by 4D, and I just thought, I know it's a bit, a bit of a hefty one, but if we're driving it, it's not too bad. I did have a bit of an issue as well with the other one, so the other trailer that's like 15,000 litres, that's on its actual way. That filled up, but I had to get it going. So it kind of just wants to sit behind. Now I understand on this first headland, so I'm hoping after this, it will work fine. We're driving this one currently. Forage harvester only actually goes four meters, uh, four miles an hour. Sorry, but the good thing about that is we're doing nine meters every time, and we haven't missed bits yet too much. So, you know, in a minute we'll obviously fill up and we'll make away. We'll have a look. I'm hoping the trailer comes back and everything's working pretty good. Fingers crossed. Anyway, but we're making a start, and that's the main thing. Did turn off crop destruction just because we're obviously going to do quite a bit. Especially with the, this first headland, it's not ideal at all. But yeah, we'll, we'll get through it, we'll get through it. I'm just hoping he does travel back. I mean, if we have enough time here on this turn, we might be able to just take a glance at where he's at. So it looks like he's there. And if we just jump over, just to make sure. Yes, he's tipping, so that's great news. So, so far, so good. It's going to be a bit of a task. I'm still hopeful, but we've had to. We've, we've already had a few problems that we've had to fix. We've had to swap out our forage harvester, and I did put the 3,000 odd back in. 
then we had to pay an absolute fortune just to lease out this forage harvester. And we're obviously struggling because we don't even have a silage trailer anymore. We've had to lease one out, so yeah. This is going to be fun. Let's see if we can get up this hill with uh, 34,000 litres of fresh maize. But he's on his way back, so what I'll do is I'll make sure he's turned into the field before. It is a full loop, and hopefully he will go down and have no issue connecting to him. It's a nice spot as well. There's a bit of space on the left-hand side of the forage harvester, so I'm yeah, hoping that works. But we'll definitely wait it out. Um, has he clipped? No, he hasn't. That's good. Still going. <laughs> I mean, on court farms, this worked a treat. I had a, it was a breeze because obviously the collisions, it's a bit of a bigger map. I know this areas on court farms are really tight, like the entrances to the fields, but the ones I was, the fields I was working on, the grass ones, didn't really have that issue. Um, so it, it can work really well. well. There's other times where you, you just know, it's like squeaky bum time. You know that it could be either horrendous or pretty good. Doesn't want to get up this hill, does it? Come on. I'm glad we went with the bigger trailer. But by the time we actually get up this hill and get there, he'll probably be full. He's flying straight through the field. <laughs> and you can use avoid fruit, but we're going to make it simple. I've told it not to avoid fruit. Let's take a bit of a shortcut, eh? So far, though, it's looking all right. We might be able to get a glimpse as well just to see if they start rolling. But we need this. We need this feed. We really do. The amount of hay that we've picked up, it's going to be good. It's actually moving. It's working a treat. <laughs> Finally. So let's get this tipped. I'll have a look how he's done. And the good thing about me using this one as well is I can actually tip to the sides. So we can keep him going down the middle with his smaller amount. But then I can obviously tip down either side just to try and make it a bit easier when it comes to compacting and uh, levelling this out. So let's tip down this side first. I think it's probably better if we travel back this way. No, they're still moving. I thought they'd stop them, but they are still moving. If we go to the wait point, simulator's getting a call. That's probably the best way to do it. Yep, you can see that he has finished off. So it's down to us now to go down. Now, I'm hoping he doesn't travel up and we meet him. He probably is trying to travel up. Not quite yet. He is now. Oh, I just about made that turn. There we go. The good thing about this hill is it actually means we're going to go up slow anyway. So I'll drop it down to three miles an hour because I think it's going to struggle itself to get up this hill. In two miles an hour. But yeah. I think we're in the way there move back there we go so normally I like to do a montage but it's going to be a difficult unless I can be confident these two are going to work in unison I will try that but I think for at least this first field we'll go and uh, yeah just use we'll just manually do this trailer and then we'll leave the other one to auto drive and let course play do its thing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this on a time lapse and hope that it goes really well fingers crossed it will and then at the end, we're going to have hopefully a lot of maize silage. Hopefully, anyway. And uh, we'll cut back in halfway through, set up the next one, and we'll do it all horseplay and auto drive. <laughs>
Right, welcome back. This is a nightmare. I'm going to just say it now, this has been an absolute nightmare. I've had so many problems. I tried to get some footage of me doing, obviously, my side of the carting. Uh, but yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare. I had to change it from clockwise to anti-clockwise in this field because as the harvester was coming up, it was just, it's like the, the header was just digging in and it kept, like, obviously having a collision, so it turned off. Um, the bunker as well, the bunker it really needs taking out and we need to place in our own one because I've had the silage or the fresh maize tip over the side here so I've had to put that in manually with the uh, load all and then obviously as you can see it's not filling in at the back so we've got a bit of a visible wall when it comes to this and also it's going over on this side as well so yeah ideally I'd take that out in GE and uh yeah we'd put our own in so i just hope this one goes smooth we're going to just do all auto drive and see how it goes i mean we're not doing too bad i think we're at like two hundred thousand, maybe a little bit more so definitely getting enough yeah 285 which will bring us hopefully to around half a million liters um it's going to get caught as well this is now traveling it's going to hit with this because there's not enough space for it to travel around the field but so far I mean we're doing alright on this one it's just yeah it's a lot of teething pains I'd definitely call this a bit of a nightmare harvest though because yeah you want everything to kind of run smoothly you know you're going to have a few problems this is going to be fun it did, it did slow down though but yeah you, you do you know you're going to get a few problems you really are and uh, it's never ideal but I've never had it like this before I mean, it's always on this map as well. I don't know if the, the hedges were a good idea in the long run, I think, with it being a game and, you know, we're using modded versions of technically, like, in-game AI. Could be worse. You know, we could not do it at all. It's doing the job eventually, I guess. It's just, yeah, I have to be honest with you. This is has been a bit of a nightmare. Um, other maps I have really smooth when it comes to course playing auto drive but yeah it's just a difficult also think the place i've picked i mean it is hilly that was the challenge at the start that's obviously made it a little bit difficult especially with was having that issue where it was um colliding into the <laughs> into the, the ground it might make sense to not use these two fields especially these hilly ones it's made size we could turn them into grass fields it'd probably be better to mow um and then maybe make them two down there, May Salage. If I was going to do it again, the series from the start, I'd take out the bunker, I'd put in my own bunker, my own modded one. Um, I'd also, yeah, make sure that they weren't maze fields. Maybe that big one that we've just combined. Something like that. I'd go for a bit more flat when it comes to May Salage, just because obviously the forage harvester. But yeah, the bunker, definitely the bunker and a bigger field, bigger boundary as well for it to run off would be good. I mean, we're, this is not good as well now because we're obviously backing up. But we'll get through it. Not been fun, though. And that's the way I like to play. I like having a bit of fun. When you get that many problems, it just becomes a bit of a pain. But as long as I get that bunker filled up by the end of the episode, I'll be happy. I might do the compacting in between. I mean, I think I've been recording for about two hours and I've only done one field. It's been that, yeah, it's been that difficult. So that's pretty crazy for two hours. Uh, but it was always going to be a challenge. Bally Spring, with the hilly surrounding that I picked, was always going to be a challenge. <sighs> I am glad that is done. That was problematic. It really was. It was a. It was just an headache. I had so many problems at the start. And then everything else was just a problem after that. I I had a problem with the forage harvester when I tried to drive. It's like it was automatically just changing from automatic gears to manual. So I don't know if I've got some mod conflicts causing that. So I need to fix that definitely. I then had another problem with the fuel. So this, it should have a trigger. And it should even have the, the icon for the trigger for me to fuel up. But I can't. So I've actually got fuel in here and just doesn't work. So this no longer allows me to put any fuel in so at the moment i've got nowhere to fuel up from so i'm gonna have to place something down 
which is a shame. So what I did was I actually obviously used... Um, oh, I'll show you with this because this is going to go back anyway. So the fuel technically we got with it. But if you go into the F12 menu and you've got Easy Deb mod, you can actually fill up certain things. So I had to fill the fuel up in certain vehicles because they were running low with that because I couldn't get the fuel that I already had in here. So yeah, that's a pain. And I know with this one, I'm sure I don't refill. I think it just takes money off me as I do fill up. So something's definitely gone wrong with that. Um, I haven't touched it in GE or anything. Um, just something along the lines is, is having a bit of a conflict with that. But after all that, we did it. It's done. I'll, I'll just go quickly show you how we finished off. And you can see that we've got quite a lot. I'm happy with it. 572,000 litres. So over a half a million. And the only negative is this backside. It just wouldn't fill up past this point. So you can see that it kind of tips off, um, which is a shame. And then on this side, we've got a little bit that I need to sort out. Yeah, but not bad going. It obviously needs compacting, 9%. So it's going to be a big job just to compact it. Um, can't use course play, unfortunately, because obviously it doesn't work with this. We tried it before. It gets stuck, tries to hit the, 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 the buildings, anything really. So, yeah, we'll, I'll get it done, though. I'll get it done. So the next episode, when it starts, that will be sheeted up. And then, obviously, we'll have a hell of a lot of silage, which is the main aim. I'm glad I got that one out of the way, because I'm looking forward to doing CCM in the next episode. Hopefully, either that or potatoes, depends. CCM's probably more likely, because we definitely know day one of September, that's going to be ready to harvest. So we can start working at that. I'm going to have to place a bunker down for that as well. So... We'll find a spot for that in the next episode. We've spent a lot of money. We really have. We're at 37000 Obviously, the cost from using auto drive and course play took its toll, but, I, but leasing out the equipment in the end that we did. I know we sold a trailer, but we yet to lease out two trailers, and the forage harvester was an arm and a leg. But we got there. That's the main thing. We spent a lot of money in it, but it will pay off. I mean, it's probably about, though, when you think about it, to get that many silage there is probably about one month's worth, at least, of milk sales. Well, the profit we make, so... Not ideal, but it has to be done, especially where, where there's not having the equipment. Oh, but yeah, a slog and half that one was, it really was. Probably not the easiest one to record as well, so I hope the video turns out alright. But yeah, next episode, CCM, then we're, we got the potatoes, and at that point then, we can start getting some pigs. And then we'll see... We'll take a bit of a recap, see where the series is at. Um, and we might move over to another map, do another series, whatever. But we'll try, probably evaluate it and see what's best. But I think that's the perfect spot for me to end the video. I'm going to go and have a brew. Definitely earn one after that. Definitely earn one after that. But thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator.